Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. One of the most common questions I get is how to set up wireless training on OpenTX. We're going to cover that today. Before I get started, I'd like to say thanks to my patrons who've joined me on Patreon. If you'd like to show your support for the channel, here's a quick link for you, and I'll put it in the description as well. We recently cracked 61% on the non-subscribe versus subscribe ratio for viewers, which is awesome. So first thing I want to do is thank all of you new subscribers who helped drive that number down. And for the other 61%, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button and join the channel. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you're made aware when new things happen on the channel as well. Okay, let's get started. Wireless training is one of those very cool technologies available on OpenTX. And because we have the multi-module in these jumper and radio master radios, you don't have to do OpenTX to OpenTX. If I had a Spectrum or a FlySky radio, I'd show you how to do it, but I don't. I've only got OpenTX radios, but you'll get the idea. I'll explain everything. Before we get into the configuration options, I want to show you the hardware you're going to need to pull this off. Obviously, you need two radios. You'll also need a receiver for the airplane. We're going to imagine this first key XSR is the one that goes in the airplane. The next thing you'll need is an external module in your radio to talk to the airplane. So the external module talks to the plane. The internal module talks to the student. So you need two transmitters in the master radio. You need one to talk to the airplane and you need one to talk to the student. You can get these FR Sky XJTs just about anywhere online. And they're relatively cheap. They're only like 30 bucks, maybe 40 bucks. It's been a long time since I bought one. Regarding the software configuration, there are seven things we need to do today. And I'm going to start out with a little vernacular. So point number one, this radio will be the one in the hand of the student. This one will be the one in the hand of the instructor. So we call that trainer, student. The second thing we need to do is bind the receiver to the trainer. So the airborne receiver gets bound to the trainer radio over here. That's the one that gets control over the receiver in the air. Third thing we need to do is bind the trainer to the student, so we have to establish a wireless link between these two. Remember what I said when I talked about the hardware. The external module connects to the in-flight receiver. The internal module connects to the student radio. Number four, we have to set the model trainer mode to master multi. That's kind of an important step because we're telling the radio, hey, use the multi-module for an input. Number five, we'll add a special function so we can enable trainer mode. And number six, in the system settings on the trainer, we have to set up how we want the two radios to interact when we're in trainer mode. And then finally, the last thing we need to do is validate our outputs and make sure that things work the way we think they're supposed to work. We've already identified number one. This is the trainer and this is the student. So I'm going to jump right into number two, and that's to bind the receiver to the trainer. I'm in the radio setup on the trainer. And I'm just going to tell you up front that as soon as I turn this external module on, the screen light's going to go on because I've already bound the receiver to the radio to test. So you'll have to forgive the fact that I'm not going to actually conduct the bind process, but I want to show you where things get done. So remember, this is the receiver that goes in the plane, and we're going to use the external RF to bind to that receiver. Right now that mode is off. I'm just going to switch it over to XJT. And there you go. See, I got a bind right away. I knew that would happen as soon as I turned it on. If you haven't bound your receiver to your radio, just make sure you do it with your external module. Okay? That's the key to take away here, not how to bind the thing. If I wanted to bind this, I would simply hold the button down, power it on, hit bind, and it would, it would work. Okay, the next step is to go to the internal module on the trainer and set that to multi. Right? We want to go click that on multi, and then on the protocol, we'll select FR Sky RX. That's the important bit. It has to say FR Sky RX. And the reason we need to do that is because I'm going to use FR Sky as the protocol on this side. I suppose I could use DSM or something else if I wanted to, but I'm going to use FR Sky RX. On the student radio, we'll go into the model setup and scroll down to the internal RF module and we'll set that to mode multi. And the protocol I want to use is FR Sky. See, we have bind as an option on the student and bind as an option on the trainer. So we'll just put both of them in bind mode. And there we go, they're bound. Okay, that's cover step number three. We've got our trainer and our student radios bound together. Now let's move on to step number four, which is where we're gonna set the trainer mode to master multi. So in the model configuration, just go left and you'll see the mode down here at the bottom. Currently it says mode 
Master Jack. We just want to change that to Master. Trainer signal recovered. Trainer signal lost. Trainer signal recovered. There we go. Trainer signal recovered. We're on Master Multi. I'm just turning the volume down so we don't get swamped with audio while I'm trying to talk. Step number five is to add a special function to enable trainer mode. So we'll go into the model configuration and click over to special functions. And you can see I've already got one enabled. I used SF1 and I'm gonna use SG down. I know a lot of people like to use a momentary switch and you could do that. My theory is that I'm just gonna keep my finger near that switch and if I wanna take control, I'll just flip it. Uh, because I use my momentary switch for instant trim. I guess I could use the T5 or T6, but I don't think I'd wanna stand there and hold the switch while a student's flying. That just seems odd to me. Anyway, I used a normal switch. You can use whatever you want. Use a momentary, use one of the T5, T6 buttons, whatever makes you happy. I used SG down. Just make sure when you do that, you set the option to be trainer sticks, and don't forget to put a check mark over here on the right to enable that. With our switch set up to enable trainer mode, let's take a look at the system trainer setup, which is item number six. We'll get there by pressing the system button and page left three times. And that brings us to the trainer setup tab. I want to cover some of the symbols on the trainer setup. Notice that on the aileron line, I've got a plus and an equal. And then on the elevator throttle and rudder, I've got a colon and an equal. What that does is in this mode with the plus and the equal, the trainer and the student are both controlling inputs. So the trainer can override what the student does. And I will show you an example of how that works a little bit later. I just wanted to point out what that does. The second thing is on these percentages, that basically is the weight. So if you take that weight and lower it, what it does is lowers the amount of throw the student gets. It's kind of like setting dual rates for the student. So you can lower this from, right now I have it set at 100, and I think for testing purposes, you wanna make sure you leave it at 100 to verify output from the student to the trainer. You'll notice on the bottom there's a multiplier option and a cal option. The multiplier option is used in the event you're not hitting 100% on your throws. The cal option is used to tell the radio where center is on the student. What I wanna do before we go any further is show you how to do a quick calibration. On the student radio, put everything at center, all the sticks at center. We're only using four sticks, so we don't need to worry about pots and all that stuff. But put your sticks at center, and then also make sure there are no trims. Make sure your trims are zeroed out, and a little pro tip, make sure your sub trims are zeroed out as well. You don't want any trims at all. You can go back to trims later, but for now, make sure your sub trims are zeroed out, and that your trim on the radio are zeroed out as well. And once you've zeroed out your trims, on the trainer, bring the cursor down to the cal field and just hit enter twice, click, click. And what that does is it sets zero for all the sticks on the student radio. All right, step number seven is to validate output. So we're gonna start by using the output that we see in the trainer setup. And you can see I've got a little bit of fluctuation, but I wanna verify all four channels. Channel one is my aileron. You can see I've got 99.8, I can live with that. And 100 on this side, good. On the elevator, all the way down, I see negative 100, good. All the way up, I see 99.8 again, I can live with that. And then on the throttle, I see 99.8, I'm okay with that. And down to 100, and then on the rudder, I see 94.7 and 94.3. Not sure about that. I'm not sure what's going on with that. Ah, I found it. The reason that we only saw 95 is because I had a rate set up on the student radio. So let's just change that to 100, and that should get us back where we need to be. See, this is why you do these tests. I mean, that's kind of, I'm kind of glad that happened to me because this lets you see why you need to test these things. If you don't test this and make sure you have what you expect to have, then when you're flying, you could be in for some surprises. You could be in for a frustrated student too. The student could say, but I am adding rudder. And you say, you're not even close. So let's try it again now. Now notice that the calibration is way off. So I've got to do the cal again. All right, there we go. Now we've got a full 100% on the rudder and the elevator and the aileron and the throttle. Okay, good. Now we know that we've got a good setup between the trainer and the student. Everything is outputting correctly. 
Now that we've validated the outputs between the student and the trainer, we can back out of the system setup. I've already set up a little page monitor with outputs so you can see what's coming in from the student radio. The only thing to do now is activate the switch that we designated for our trainer sticks. I'm gonna go ahead and flip my SG down. Now when I move the aileron stick on the student, we should see output in two places. We'll see it in channel one on the trainer. We'll also see it in our receiver. And that's the important one to me because this verifies that whatever the student is doing is winding up on the receiver. Let's go ahead and move the stick and watch the output change on the trainer. There we go, all the way to 100. And then notice down here the S bus output is also moving with the student stick. Okay, that's success. Now we'll move the elevator and make sure that works. And I see movement on both interfaces, so we definitely are good there. I'll move the throttle and I can see movement on both interfaces there. And we'll move the rudder and I've got movement on both interfaces there. Perfect, that looks great. I mentioned earlier that I wanted to show you those two options in the trainer setup, the override and the add. So let's take a look at that real quick. Hit system and go left three times. And notice that I've got the aileron set to plus and equal. So take a look at what happens here. When I move the stick on the student radio, just a partial amount, okay, I've only moved it a little bit. I can come up on the trainer radio and add more to it. You see that? You see the movement on the S bus output on the M8S? We can see that same output on the Radio Master channel monitor too. So I'm just gonna move the stick on the student just a little bit and I'm gonna finish the job on the trainer. You see what's happening there? My hand's off, but the student still has movement. Now I'm gonna add a little bit more and you can see the trainer is kinda of augmenting what the student is doing. One other thing I wanna show you in the trainer setup is if you have a channel mapping issue. In my case, I have AETR. On the left-hand side, you see aileron, elevator, throttle, rudder. That's a reference to the sticks on the trainer. On the student radio, if the student has ailerons on channel three, you'd simply set aileron input to channel three on the student. That's all you'd have to do. If your elevator were channel four on the student radio, you'd simply come over here and set this elevator to be channel four. That's how you do the mapping from one radio to the next. I would like to give you guys a couple of operational considerations when it comes to rates. Notice I'm in the trainer setup on the trainer radio. On the aileron line, I've got a value of 100% in this column. That reflects a weight for the student radio. So what I wanna do is demonstrate that if I put the student stick all the way over to the right, right now you can see that the aileron movement is set at just about 100, 99.8. And you can see the S bus output going to the in-flight receiver is all the way over to the right. If you wanna limit the student's ability for deflection, but not your own, you can come in here and reduce this. Watch when I spin this value down. I've got that 100% highlighted. I'm just gonna spin it down and notice what happens on the output on the S bus. You see that declining? So now I'm at 50% and you can see that my stick is still all the way over, but I'm only at 50%. So what this does is it stops the student from going full deflection, but the trainer can come in and finish the job. Does that make sense? So right now the, the student is at full deflection. That's all they get to do that far, but the trainer can come in and finish the job. Okay, so if you want to limit the student's input, you can do it here. You can just kind of, it's kind of like dual rates for the student is what it boils down to. Now we'll set that back up to 100%. And I also want to show you the concept of rates. I set up a real quick dual rate example just so you could see how it works. On the ailerons, I've got the current rate set at 100, no expo, but you get the idea. This line is bold, SB is up, so this is the rate that's in effect. I'll move my stick all the way over to the right and you can see the output on S bus is all the way to full deflection down here on the M8S. Now, if I set the rate to the mid rate, which is 35, notice that the student rate moved to 35. Now, if I flip it back up to full rates, we're back up to full rates. Here's the operational consideration. If you use the percentages in the trainer setup, you're limiting the student, but not the trainer. If you use rates on the trainer, you're limiting the student and the trainer. That's the key to take away. One other key point, the student doesn't know it's talking to another radio. So any dual rate setup or triple rate setup on the student radio will manifest itself by a reduction in weights going outbound to the trainer. Hey, and I guess the last thing you need to know 
is that if the student is doing something you don't like, you simply turn it off. You flip the SG switch to the up position and notice the outputs completely went away. So the student no longer has control. When you're ready to give it back, you move SG down and there you go, student's got control again. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned something today. If you like this content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Your subscription really does matter. That's all I've got for today, guys. Take it easy.